You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates, and grow your profits. Hello there and welcome. If you are looking to improve the performance and return on investment of your marketing, then you've tuned in to the right podcast. I'm Chloe Thomas, the host of this marketing focused podcast, and it's very nice to have you all out there listening. So thank you for joining me. In today's episode, I'm talking to Kunli about segmenting your audience and then advertising audiences because this month is all about email marketing. So I hope you've enjoyed our first three shows where we've gone through welcome campaigns and post-purchase campaigns and how to get more email signups. In this week's episode and next week's episode, we're going to be looking at things you can merge into your email marketing in order to create something that's bigger than the sum of its parts, I suppose. And so in this episode, we're going to be talking about using your email marketing lists with primarily Facebook ads, but we'll touch on some other platforms as well and how you can use that to to really amp up the impact of the marketing that you're doing. Um, So that's what we're going to be talking about together with because Cuddly is awesome at this, so we had to ask him questions about it as well, together with getting into some really clever stuff around segmenting your email list itself. We're just about to meet him, but before we do, please do check out the sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Klaviyo, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform for brands of all kinds and sizes. Whether you're an entrepreneur just starting out or you're part of a marketing team at a multinational brand, Klaviyo will give you everything you need to create memorable marketing moments, building customer relationships that keep shoppers coming back time and time again. Get started with a free account today. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash master plan. Today, I'm chatting with email marketing expert, Cunley Campbell. Cunley is an e-commerce obsessive, an outsourced CMO and advisor to a range of D2C product businesses. He's been involved in e-commerce and online marketing since the early 2000s and is now best known as the host of the 2X e-commerce podcast. Hello, Cunley. Hi, Chloe. How's it going? Um, Thank you for having me on. Uh, it's good. It's good to have you here. It's always nice to catch up with a fellow e-commerce podcaster, especially when they're from the UK. So hello. <laughs> oh, hello. 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 Um, yeah. Awesome. So look, um, let's let's get straight into it because we, we both know the audience want the goods, don't they? So um, how did you get into email marketing? How did you get the email marketing bug? It was out of necessity, to be honest. So um at the core, and I still do this, I'm an acquisition person. Um, so back, back in the days, I started out in SEO and SEO is all about acquisition when you think about it. And then, um, I did that with a little bit of, with a lot of search engine marketing, which was predominantly AdWords. Um, as, as time went on and I realized that, you know, e-commerce was a subsector I wanted to get into in the whole digital marketing space, um, I first realized um, that two things really mattered. Conversion rate optimization, um, which really is the user experience you deliver on your site and the test you run um, just to squeeze as many, you know, desired conversions as possible, as, as many desired actions as possible. And then the second was retention. I realized that it was much cheaper to, to 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 make money or essentially sell to existing customers that know, love, and will share, you know, um, the good news or the good stuff about your brand than it was to go out, you know, cold, you know, um, to to acquire customers. And so, um, in order to suppress CPA, which is um, cost per acquisition, essentially. I started to look into email. So what I do now essentially is um, 50% acquisition and then 50% retention. And retention primarily um, is 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 email. Um, don't want to talk about SMS, but it's primarily email um, or it's primarily um, delivered through email. There's also customer experience in terms of, you know, um, there's no way you're going to get people to buy more if they haven't had a pleasant experience with your brand. Um, and, um, yeah, so it's, it's really acquisition on the one hand and retention on the other. And that's why I'm really focused on email these days. Yeah. It is kind of like that light bulb moment for a lot of people who start off with the ad buying side of things. It's like, 
oh, I can increase my overall profitability if I do something to keep them. Um, so exactly. it's like, how do I do that? Email marketing. Exactly. Okay. Well, look, what you're here to tell us about today, Connie, is, is how that world of online ads and email connects in a considerably more in more intense way, I suppose, than simply one being a way to make more money out of the other. Um, so do you want to explain kind of the nuts and, bolt and bolts of what we're going to be talking about today? So I, w I want us to talk about um, segmentation, um, the importance of segmenting customer types, not just within the email ecosystem, but also sharing that with other platforms with other acquisition platforms so that you have a very synchronous message across the board. So a use case will likely be, I receive an email which you know reminds me that there's going to be a product launch, um, say, at the end of the month. At the same time, in the same vein, um, say I was a VIP customer, in the same vein, um, being a VIP customer since I get an early sort of... Um, I get early access to to this product launch. I should be able to still get that message if I was in Facebook, if I was in Snapchat, or if I was on Instagram. And um, it would, and if I miss that email, having the ability to amplify that same message across other social channels actually, you know, enables me be more aware and will increase the success rate of me taking it, you know, action um, on, on your offer as an existing customer. It's those segments that you've worked hard to create in your email marketing and sending them out to other platforms. So we're talking Facebook ads, we're talking Google ads as well? Google ads, not so much. Um, there, there is custom audience support in Google ads, but it's not as thorough. So with Google ads, you could obviously upload your email list. You could upload segments of your email list. You could do it with Google ads. I haven't done it so well with Google ads, but I, I'm, I'm talking more around the social advertising space. Um, where there's a lot of traction because more people hang out in on social platforms than um, the rest of the web per se. Most people would be, the first thing they open, the first app they open would be a social network. They spend more time on social. So getting them on social platforms, be it TikTok, be it you know um, Snapchat, be it Facebook, be it Instagram, um, how do you get that message you know um, synchronized across the board? There, there are possibilities with that words, but um, it would be out of the scope of this conversation. Got you. So what we're, what we're kind of saying is it's a complete example of something you could do, but at the moment, there's not the case studies and the point of doing it. So yes, you can do what we're saying about on Google ads, but where the, where the big opportunities are is with those social platforms. So we can do these kind of methods with, is it all the social platforms that enable us to do this at the moment? I mean, I'm guessing we're going to spend the rest of our, our chat on Facebook, but can we do it with the others? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So they they support. Um, they all support custom audiences. Now, the only challenge with with all of the social platforms is um, almost all email platforms, ESPs I've been involved with, support automatic sync with Facebook. So they don't have like a turnkey solution yet for all the other social media platforms, which may change over the over the, the course of the year. But if you say log into a Clavio or or um, uh, an OmniSend, you will find like um, you know segment syncs. Um, so you could you know log into a segment you're creating on there, and you could with the click of few buttons, um, sync it up with, with a Facebook audience you create, but you can't do that with, um, with Twitter. You can't do that with it, with, um, with Snapchat or TikTok. However, you could export those lists as a CSV and then upload to TikTok, to Snapchat and, you know, all other social platforms. 
Cool. So our the segments we create in our email marketing with Facebook, we can do those auto syncs. That's great because it keeps the data accurate in almost real time and you don't have to bother to do it. And you don't have the, it's not even get into the GDPR issues of exporting and importing lists of people's data. We're not going to go there. Um, but with the other platforms, you've got the manual option, which means it's only as, update, as the la- updated as the last time you did it. Right. Kind of, I think that's enough of the nuts and bolts. Should we talk about the exciting stuff? Are you what you can do with this? to make more sales. So so when you, you know, and I know you've done this with a, lot, with a lot of different businesses. So when you approach this for the first time, what's kind of your must test first option for leveraging this tech? I'd split it out into three, three kinds. So the foundation really is segment, right? So what you should do using what's called the RFM analysis, which most marketers should be aware of, which um, you know um, stands for recency, frequency, and monetary value. So with with recency, you're, you're talking about the last time your customers actually you know came to buy. So how fresh, essentially, it's the freshness of a sale. So someone who's recently purchased from you, you know, over the last ninety days, will have a high R score in the in the RFM analysis. Um, then with the frequency, you're talking about you know the 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 number of times people actually you know buy from you. What's the average? You, you're setting averages here. Now, if we go back to the recency, um, let's give you two examples. Um, let's say I sell flowers. For instance, um, I was a flower subscription business. You'd expect um, flowers to be either weekly, fortnightly, or monthly. You know, on, in, in that respect. So, um, someone who's bought a customer who's bought three months ago will have a very low recency score, right? So they might then have slipped to what I call like an inactive customer segment, right? So that's one segment. From a recency perspective, someone who's you know bought just last week will score a ten out of ten, and so they have a high recency. In terms of frequency, um, which is very product dependent, you'd have um, so with the flowers, you know, base uh, with the flowers, um, you could score um, customers who buy weekly at a nine or a ten. Then um, you know, customers who buy every fortnightly at a seven or eight, and then customers who buy monthly as a five, and then customers who just buy occasionally as a three or a two. So that's your frequency now. Then you have your value, which is monetary value, how much they spend. Um, there's there's a scoring in that. So you could set it up and say, okay, people who, sp- who spend um, £100 or $100 um, monthly are our VIP cost up. Well, they, they've scored high in the monetary value bit. And then, you know, customers who spend 50 to 60 are a seven or a six. And then customers who spend less than, you know, 20 a month um, are, you know, just, um, you know, uh, low value customers, low spenders per se. Now, when you combine this together for every customer, so many sort of e-commerce well, many e-commerce platforms will allow you to do this in the background. You're able to come up with um, a score, with a full RFM score. Now, once you do that, you're able to sort of segment you know, your customer types. Now, you, you at the start of this whole segmentation journey, you should and must keep it very simple. And I would say that, or I would suggest that you have your VIP customers, ordinary customers, and inactive with who are just subscribed but haven't yet purchased. If you keep it that simple, you'd be able to execute and um, you'd be able to send messages you know, more effectively. The reason being is that um, the flows and the messaging that you create um, will have to be different. The way you speak to a VIP customer and the, or to VIP customers and the messages and the offers you send to them will be quite different to people who've never bought from you and also quite different to, to, to people who've actually bought from you. Okay. So currently we've, we've got, we've done our RFM modeling. So we've done, done that scoring. We've identified these three key audiences to start with our testing. So we've got our inactives, our VIPs and and the rest of our customers, I suppose. What I'm getting from what you've been saying is that 
is that it's not just about we'll create this segment just for Facebook ads. We're creating this segment in order to send a series of emails first and foremost, and then we're going to bolt in the Facebook ad activity to support that messaging. Is that a fair assumption? That's exactly spot on because um, email will be your core retention channel. You know, it's the way you speak and talk to you know to customers. But when you start viewing your email list as a CRM, you know, database, and you understand that not all customers are the same, then you'd, you'd view email marketing completely differently. And the messaging, the flows, the offers, even the pricing may be different or will likely be be different. You'd have different strategies to activating or even moving people up the tier. It's like a pyramid. You're going to have fewer VIP customers at the top. You're going to have the big middle, which are existing customers. And at the bottom, you're even going to have a bigger base of people who've just subscribed and not been able to you know, um, make a purchase as yet. And your objective as an e-commerce director or e-commerce marketer essentially is to move people up the pyramid. And when you start to see success off the back of that, you could then create further segments. Now, the trouble is most e-commerce strategies have one segment, one segment they, they have a plan for. And guess what segment that is? It's the engaged email list. So they just say, okay, who's, they, they say, we're only going to send emails out to people who've engaged with us, right? Um, if you send emails to to every every single contact in your database, I'm sorry, there's, <laughs> that's another <laughs> issue completely. But most, <laughs> most, the, the, most people do the basics and, and the basic of the, the basic, which is down to resources a lot of the time is let's just filter out people who've opened or clicked on our, on our um, emails in the last 90 days or last 60 days. And let's send them, you know, this message, this broad stroke message. So let's you you were making a really good good um good shout there for the uh what was it oh the welcome sequence which we had another episode in this series was really strong on welcome sequences so there's a chance some of you have actually set it up since then but all they've done so far is set up the email flow the series of of emails that goes out from that initial email sign up so how do we then get Facebook ads involved to take it to the next level what's the once we've synced that audience between our um, our email system and Facebook ads, how do we create the Facebook ad that's going to work? Is it just like copy and paste the email? Okay, so you look at the major gist of your email, your welcome series. So, so most welcome series would you know tell tell customers about why you're in business, you know, um, who's behind the brand, how you could support the brand. You actually create like a, you know, cause. Now, take that message and try and repurpose that into 30 second, 45 second videos, right? That are very Facebook, you know, friendly. So the format is four by five, I think, for aspect ratio of four to five. Um, and try and tell your brand story, your how, your why, you know, create little snippets or little video snippets, basically, that will sync up with that particular list of new subscribers with Facebook. So it's it's almost like um, an introduction in a chapter of a book. You're introducing your brand. So, and it has to be in sync with the words or you know the the visuals you put in your email so if you could you know sort of set up you know um you know videos essentially um video versions of your email then you know they even if they miss those emails they they still get the message or the message is further reinforced when they're logged into facebook Got you. So it's it's not a copy and paste, but it's a, what does that email feel like? What's the key message of that email? How can we repurpose that to make it a powerful Facebook ad? Which, as you say, probably means video, not not a huge pile of text. Exactly. It's 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 very. It should be very native to the platform, and it could be a very simple. Your founder is, you know, um, the founder to an iPhone. You know, so I so basically like. N- 
iPhone generated content is not bad at all. So you could have an iPhone, you could set an iPhone up on a tripod, tell your story, subtitle it, you know, put a nice caption off the back of it and almost um, repurpose the content of your, you know, introductory email as a video from the founder. You know, if, you know, you're, you're a very founder first, you know, type of brand, if you're not, um, you know, let somebody else, you know, tell the story or, you know, put together your assets to tell the story of your brand Um, tell your brand story, you know, give people an understanding as to why you're in business. And then also put a call to action, you know, as to how to find out more, you know, what to, you know, where to buy, how to support us, you know, drive them through to, your website again so you could get more pixel data. And we've mentioned kind of the welcome sequence, but we've only talked about one Facebook ad. So let's say the welcome sequence sends an email once a week for sanity's sake. We'll keep it really simple. Would you deploy a different video every, a different Facebook ad, depending on where in the sequence someone, the welcome email campaign? I'm, I'm confusing myself now, everybody. Uh, so it would you know when they get email a in the first week do they get a different facebook ad from when they get email b in the second week or do we s- try and create one ad that will last the entire time they're in the welcome sequence or even until they buy the idea is not to sync up with with flows per se but sync up with campaigns okay and so i'll give you i'll give you an example here we have a VIP. So we, we need to look at it from a segment standpoint rather than a flow standpoint. So it's about the audience, not, not the messaging, not, not the flows, not the campaigns. You're, you, it's about the people, the audience. So you split out your, your entire audience, you know, in, in Facebook. Oh, sorry, in, um, in Clavio, for instance. Let's just assume that, you know, everybody's using Clavio. And you, you split it out to, you know, who's subscribed but not purchased. You could do that quite easily in almost every you know email platform and then you have you have a particular message for them you could have you could you could put them in a flow in um in 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 your email in your esp at the same time in with um with facebook you put them through a flow to let them understand why you're in business you know and you know how to support you or even give them a discount right so if like you're trying to notch them from zero dollars, you know, to, to start spending at least, then you might want to incentivize them. So if you're incentivizing them on email, you're just, you're sending the same incentives by, but, but via Facebook, by social. Got it. So, so we've got, we've got like our, our core audience that we've identified that we want to do something to, we know what we want to try to get them to do in Clavio, Omnisend, whatever it is you're using for your emails, you're going to send them a series of emails to try and get them to take that task. And then over on Facebook, we're going to run ads to get them to take that, take that task. But the ads are kind of evergreen, if that makes sense. Exactly. And we, so we might, if we've got, say, a six email welcome campaign in our emails, we might test four or five of those core messages as a Facebook ad, but we're not going to change it every week in the same way we would our email marketing. Not at all. And another very good one was, um, which we did was, um, you know, pre Black Friday, mm-hmm. we had like an early bird VIP sale. So which was like one week extended. So we're easily able to identify VIP customers via um, email, via the email ESP, which is Clavio. And then we just put a sync, a Facebook audience sync with that. And then the only people on Facebook that could see it, that could receive it, were the VIP, was a VIP list because it was in sync with that particular campaign in Facebook. So if you're talking, if you have any special message to particular segments of your customers, you know, based on an RFM scoring or just based on your three segments, three basic segments, I could go to, to about six segments, you, 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 you could then essentially um, sync up that message to Facebook um, so it's in sync with with um, with with your um, with, with your email message nice so we could use this both for kind of the evergreen content like the welcome campaign what we send to our door you know our inactives but we could also use it for key events where there's a key segment we want to send it to like you're saying with the the 
Black Friday preview that went only to the VIP customers and sync it in the same way there. I, I like it. So for one-off events, like, um, like your Black Friday or a particular event, the beauty about it is you can export your list, your email list, and then um, upload them to other social platforms. We did that. We did it for Snapchat as a custom audience and then still get the message in sync. So you have, you know, an almost omnipresent reach, you know, to, to, to through other platforms. Um, but I would suggest that because they're not automatically synced with, in sync with them, um, with, with Klaviyo or OmniSend, you just use them for one-off events to just maximize your reach. And, and they're not, it's not that expensive, you know, from a CPC or CPM perspective to, to get onto the other platforms and just, you know, expand your reach. Very nice. I like it. Well, look, Connie, thank you for taking us through all of that. I suspect that's got our audience going Oh, this is exciting. Uh, this gives us me a whole new way into uh, kind of expanding my email marketing into my into my Google ad active, or not Google ad, Facebook ad activity and beyond. Right now, we're going to pause for a reminder of our sponsors, and then we'll be talking about the wider world of email marketing. Success in 2021 means building stronger relationships with your customers. Last year saw a lot of consumers switching to buy online, leading to surges in new customer acquisition. So how are you planning on turning your new first-time buyers into profitable repeat customers? Well, that's what Clavio is for. Clavio helps businesses create memorable marketing moments through email, SMS, and personalized website experiences. And that is what creates repeat purchases. That's why Clavio, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform, platform is used by over 50,000 e-commerce brands around the world. Get started with your free account today. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O.com slash masterplan. Okay, so Cunny, so far we've gone deep into advertising audiences and segmentation. Now you get to wow us with your insider knowledge about the whole of email marketing. So for the following questions, your answer can be anything to do with email marketing, which of course does include advertising audiences and segmentation. So Cunny, you ready for these? I am indeed. Go for it. Okay, let's start with email marketing newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to take their first step with email marketing, what do they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? You're speaking to people, remember? I love it. Straightforward, speaking to people. Okay, now once you've started, of course, you've got to keep optimizing. So what's your favorite way to improve email marketing performance? I think flows would be most important, you know, getting all your, your, your basic flows in, you know, in place from your welcome series, you know, your, your band on cart, um, you know, series, your post purchase sequence, um, looking into your, your, your transactional emails, um, just ensuring that, um, you know, those evergreen, um, you know, flows are in place will, will be most important. Okay, cool. And if someone listening wants to learn more about email marketing, is there one cheap or free resource you'd recommend? Um, so Clavio run a Clavio Partners program, which is completely free. Um, it's for you to, to become a Clavio partner, you need to take their training and that training is, is gold. Um, so I would suggest that one on also my podcast. <laughs> Chip plug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course you can. So the two that we're talking about the 2X e-commerce podcast, uh, which is packed full of lots of good stuff around all of this as well. But that um I, I quite like that's like a cheeky sideways recommendation with the Clavio partner program. Because of course that's something designed for the likes of us, not for actual retailers. But of course a retailer could apply and then they get access to that great content. Yeah, that's great. A great resource, brilliant resource. Very cool. Okay, finally then, it's crystal ball time. What's coming up in the next six to 12 months that we should be getting ready for in email marketing? My answer is going to surprise you. I think you should look slightly beyond email marketing, you know, over the next, you know, few months, because we're more with our phones. Um, most of us are still locked down. Hopefully by summer, we wouldn't be. Um, I, I, I would suggest um, a lot more SMS marketing and also even looking at the likes of um, WhatsApp messaging um, that, you know, if you don't have like an abandoned flow for SMS, um, you're leaving money on the table. Um, a lot of a, a lot of opportunity is, you know, would, would be lost. So start collecting email, you know, um, not just email addresses, but mobile phone um, data because SMS marketing um, was big last year. It's even going to go you know, bigger this year, especially for um, Q4. 
Nice. Well, look, Gunny, we are very nearly at the end of the show. So could you please let the listeners know where they can find you and your business on the web and social media, please? So you can find me on 2X e-commerce. Um, there, there are loads of resources on there. Um, so it's just 2xecommerce.com or just search for 2X e-commerce. I hang out on um, Twitter and LinkedIn a lot. Um, so my Twitter handle is my name, Kune Campbell. Um, just Kune Campbell, just search for, for Kune on, on Twitter and also search for me on, on LinkedIn. Um, it's just my name, Kune Campbell. Well, Kunli, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It's always great to catch up with you and you always share so much great insight. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Chloe. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Well, guys, there you have it. Slightly confusing because it's a fairly confusing thing to do. It's uh, it's all about getting your email segmentation right first. And obviously the RFM method, which, uh, which Kunli was advocating there, is such been so central to distance retailing success over the decades and then you use those audiences to better target facebook advertising activity is what we're saying so you can integrate most of the high quality email marketing platforms will enable you to integrate with your facebook ads account to have kind of almost real time updated audiences to enable you to make sure you're getting that same clear message in front of them not a copy and paste of email a email b email c but a clear input of that specific message in front of each audience. Now, you can get the links to what we discussed, the full transcript of the episode, some important notes and much more at keepoptimizing.com. And as part of my mission to help you improve your marketing, I've invited all of our email marketing specialists to join us for a Q&A webinar at the end of our email marketing month. Now, all of them have so far said yes. So pending any last minute diary challenges, you're going to be able to put your your questions to all five of our email marketing experts. So come along, um, get yourself registered at keepoptimizing.com. Just click on the webinar link and then you can get yourself all signed up. And um, it's going to be great to catch up with some of you, find out how you're doing and how your email marketing is going. And if you're listening after the webinar happened, don't worry, you can still catch the replay. Just head to keepoptimizing.com and go to our email marketing page. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Keep Optimizing podcast. It's brilliant to have you out there tuning in and to know we're helping you improve your business. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you stick around for next week because whilst this episode we talked about how email works with Facebook ads, Next time, we're talking about how email works with SMS. Yes, we're getting all texty. Well, look, um, have a great week. Make sure you come back next time so I can help you to keep optimizing your marketing. Access everything Keep Optimizing at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S, not a Z.